Hey everyone and thank you very much for coming to my channel. My name is Glenn and I'm going to start a project today using Altair Astro's 130 EDQ. It's a quadruplet scope. Uh, it's actually called the 130 FX650. So it's for full frame cameras and it's got 650 millimeters focal length. It's quite a fast scope, it's an F5. But what's great about it is it's quadruplet, so the stars are really well corrected, right to the corners, nice and sharp, nice and round. But I wanted to really push this scope on a target. I wanted to get a lot of data. And the more data you get, the more of the image you will feel of the finer detail, etc. So I'm going to take on a deep sky object and really push the envelope. So I hope you come along for the journey as it's going to be a good one. My name's Glenn and you are watching Astrobloke. Okay, so what's the target I'm going to be pointing this fantastic scope at? Well, it's known as IC5146, the Cocoon Nebula. It's in the constellation of Cygnus, and it's quite something. I've taken images of the Cocoon Nebula before, and I'll share some of them with you now. But here's a little bit more information about that target. Tonight, we journey about 4,000 light years away to a quiet corner of the constellation Cygnus, where a stellar nursery is slowly coming to life. IC5146, better known as the Cocoon Nebula. Discovered in 1895 by E. E. Barnard, the Cocoon Nebula is a compact emission and reflection nebula roughly 15 light years across. It earns its name from the way it wraps newly formed stars in a veil of glowing gas and dark dust, much like a cosmic cocoon. At its heart lies a small cluster of young, hot, B-type stars, only a few million years old. Their ultraviolet radiation excites surrounding hydrogen gas, causing it to glow red in H-alpha emission, while nearby dust reflects starlight as a soft blue haze. One of the Cocoon Nebula's most fascinating features is its connection to a long dark filament known as Barnard 168, a dense molecular cloud stretching across several degrees of sky. This structure acts as a reservoir of cold gas, feeding ongoing star formation within the nebula. From a technical perspective, IC5146 
is a favourite target for astrophotographers. It shines brightest in narrowband wavelengths, especially hydrogen alpha, O3 and S2, which reveal intricate shock fronts and dust lanes invisible to the human eye. Visually, however, it's a challenge, requiring very dark skies and a medium to large telescope. The Cocoon Nebula reminds us that starbirth is not explosive, but patient, unfolding over millions of years in quiet, dusty corners of our galaxy. So as you can see, it's quite amazing when you find one of the many, many targets that are up there in the night sky. You look at just one and when you actually deep dive into the information about it, there's quite a lot to learn. I don't think I'm ever going to learn everything I want to about space, but I'll give it, I'll give it a fair go. But anyway, I'm going to get on with this project. I think it's going to be a good one and I'm really hoping to bring out those dust lanes and really showcase the performance of this 130 EDQ with their fantastic camera that I've bolted on the back which is their Mono 61 MFX. It's a full frame uh, mono camera. With that I've got Altair Astro's electronic filter wheel which is holding seven two inch filters also made by them. They're LRGB Color Pro filters and they're narrow band sulfur HA and O3 filters that are really narrow. They're the three nanometer filters and they are exceptional. They really do bring out fine detail. So I'm quite excited. I just want to try and get a lot of hours on this so I'm going to try and aim for at least 50 hours if I can so wish me luck hopefully we'll get some clear enough clear skies to be able to get this data together luckily for me I've got an observatory so I'm not going to miss any clear skies at all any moments I get the roof will be open and I'll be on it so wish me luck and I'll see you at the end of the video for a big reveal of the final image I need to say a huge thank you to everybody that watches my videos and more importantly subscribes to the channel. If you haven't noticed, my subscription has actually become quite large and I'm coming up to a massive milestone, one that I never in a million years imagined I would reach, which is 100,000 subscribers. Now, YouTube reward people with 100,000 subscribers with a play button. Um, it's a symbol of recognition. And I didn't realize that so few channels actually managed to get to this milestone. In fact, it's less than 1%. It's 0.85% roughly that get a YouTube play button. So the fact that I'm on the cusp of getting one of these is quite an amazing thing really, especially when I only started the channel out just as a bit of fun and to help people out. Um, but it's really grown into something quite nice and I've made some really nice friends through it. Anyway, why am I going on about this? Well, hey, it's coming up to Christmas, hence the sweater. And wouldn't it be an absolutely amazing Christmas present for me to actually finally reach the 100,000 subscribers. So I'm asking you, if you're watching this video, to please consider subscribing and help me get past the finish line. It would be absolutely amazing to be able to do it in 2025. If not, it will be sometime in the new year. But if you can help me, I'd really appreciate it. Right, back to the video. Okay, I'm currently in my observatory, and this is Altair's uh, quad, the 130-650FX. So, fully compatible with a full-frame camera, that's what your FX means. Um, and this scope is absolutely amazing. I completely have fallen in love with it. I've had it in my observatory for a while now, and I've taken numerous pictures. I've got a full review on the scope and I'll put a link above me up here 
Uh, but uh, yeah, it is quite something. The stars that come out of this uh, piece of equipment are amazing. They're so round and sharp, and that's right to the corners, even with a full frame camera. Now I'm starting a large project with this scope. I wanted to push it and see what kind of image I can get. So I'm focusing on the Cocoon Nebula with all of the uh, dust trails that come off the back of it. And I'm gonna see what I can capture with this scope. I'm hoping to get multiple nights of data and I'm gonna go for some LRGB and HA data on that target. And I'm really gonna try and push the HA. So the camera I'm using is Altair's 61. Let me see if I can bring you down here. It's the 61 MFX, which is their mono full frame camera. This is Altair's filter wheel that they now do, and it's well worth checking out. Really nice piece of kit. And this is the 61 MFX. And inside here, I've got Altair's three nanometer SH and O filters and their LRGB color filters. Fantastic filters, and again, well worth checking out. Great prices and really good quality. So we've had quite high humidity recently. So just to make sure I don't have any problems at all, I'm just including a dew tape here. Just making sure that's around where the element is, just so that we can apply a small amount of heat to prevent any dewing up. Although it's got a really nice large dew shield on here so it doesn't really have too many problems. The full frame camera really does frame up the uh, Cocoon Nebula lovely, so I'm really pleased with that, but that's everything working and looking good. So I'm just gonna park the scope up and that'll be ready for tonight. So I'll have this on a sequence in Nina. I'll just get out of the way of the uh, scope slew in there so I don't knock me over, but I'll get this all set up and then when we get astronomical dark, this roof will open, this scope will go up and we'll start some capturing. Right, let's uh, go and make sure we've got our sequence set up properly on Nina. Okay, so quickly jump in on Nina. I'm gonna go to the framing tab and I use HIPS2 FITS Sky Survey. I find that being the best one. Uh, I see 5146. Always make sure you find the number in the list below and click it. Load image. And we'll see what comes up. And we'll get the framing how we want it. So I want to make sure that the actual cocoon itself isn't in the center of the field. I want it off or down in one of the corners. So as you can see, it centralizes it in the framing and that's the cocoon nebula there. But I want, if I move this up here, I want all of this dark dust lanes to be included in the image. So I'm gonna go for a framing around about there, I reckon. That'll be good. And then we just go to the sequencer and I'm gonna go for an LRGB sequence. So it's got my transit there. We've got LRGB and I just want to add uh, another line, which is going to be HA. And I'll add another time there and I'll make that 300 seconds to so five minutes. Um, I can push to 10 minutes, but I think five minutes will be fine and we'll collect as much HA and some LRGB as we can on this target. So just to finish off setting this up. I've got some templates. I've got a start sequence telling me when to start and obviously waits for the observatory to be safe because I've got uh, a built-in uh, weather station. So when it's not safe, the roof closes. So we obviously want this to park when that happens. And we've got an end sequence there. Excellent, that is everything done. And the time is set for 
uh, this evening so that's absolutely fine I can push play now and let this wait for this evening to come so I'll do that now and everything is now waiting for the right time and then obviously for the skies to be in a safe condition and hopefully we can start capturing this amazing target Hi everyone, just a quick update on the progress of the Cocoon Nebula. The data is coming in well. I've had some really nice clear nights and managed to get some good data. And um, I've got a quite a, mo a moon about at the moment, which is causing a little bit of gradient on my LRGB. So I'm for the next, I think I've got about two or three nights this week. For, so for these nights, I'm just gonna shoot HA only and I'm gonna really try and push the HA on this image. So wish me luck and hopefully that's going to bring out some lovely rich detail.